Welcome everyone to this very special webinar as it focuses on the first ever World Lung Day which will be observed globally on 25th September 2017. Please check out www.firsnet.org for more details. Before we begin, I would like to share what I get reminded of by the word breath the immortal lines of George Strait. Life is not the breath you take, but the moments that take your breath away. But can life sustain without breath? We often take our lungs for granted, but they are the vital organs that sustain life. In 2009, CNS team was covering the 40th Union World Conference on Lung Health in Cancun, Mexico. And one of the major stories was that a big media house featured all vital organs of the human body but had forgotten about the lungs. That is why the Forum of International Respiratory Societies or FIRS as it is known as, one of the key members of which is also the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease or the Union, declared 2010 as the year of the lungs. Incidentally, in 2017, when the world observes the first ever World Lung Day, the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health is being, will be held in Mexico next month. CNS has tried to keep the focus on lungs alive all during 2010 and as well, and it joins today all global health and sustainable development fraternity in once again reinforcing the key messages around lung health on World Lung Day and beyond. We have two globally acclaimed lung health experts on our panel today. Dr. Dean E. Schroffnagel, Director, Forum of International Respiratory Societies and Professor, Pulmonary Critical Care, Sleep and Allergy Department of Medicine, University of Illinois, Chicago, USA, and Dr. Paula I. Fujiwara, Scientific Director, International Union Against TB and Lung Disease, the Union. At the onset of this webinar, let me request all participants to keep sending your questions while the panelists present. No need to wait till the end. Just type your questions using the chat function or raise your virtual hand you will see on your screen. Without any further ado, let us hear more from our distinguished panelists on why lung health is vital for sustainable development. Our first speaker is Dr. Dean Schoffnagel, Director of the Forum of International Respiratory Societies or FIRS. Welcome Dr. Dean, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sava, and thank you to the Citizens Network News for highlighting this day. And um, I would like to set the stage for World Lung Day. Uh, I would, so just a word on the Forum of International Respiratory Societies, or FERS. These are the logos of the organizations that make this up. Each one of the organizations is uh, a global organization that is, uh, um, deals with a little bit different phase of lung disease. So I think you know the union and its, um, its activity, the American Thoracic Society, the Global Initiative for Asthma, uh, the American, the ALAT or the Latin American group, Asia Pacific, each one is a little different geography and a little different um, uh, focus, but we're all interested in lung disease. Um, the, as, as you know, the, the non-communicable diseases account for about two-thirds of the world's death, and more than 40% of them are premature and preventable. There are four big uh, diseases or conditions that uh, account for most of the deaths, disability, and financial costs. 
Those are cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and lung disease. However, uh, of these non-communicable uh, diseases, respiratory disease, as uh, Sabha has just mentioned, are the least recognized and least represented. For example, it's the only one of those diseases that doesn't have or hadn't up until this year a World Lung Day. Uh, many times there will be uh, important meetings and lung disease will not be either uh, well represented or uh, uh, taken um, as well represented as it should be. Now, why is this? We're not sure exactly. Maybe, as Sabha has said, we take breathing for granted and we don't, uh, shouldn't, we don't concern ourselves with this vital activity. And perhaps that we have not been vocal enough. Next slide. So FERS really is trying to address that. And I'd like to call, uh, to call your attention in the next uh, series of slides about some of the diseases that lung, uh, some of the lung diseases and their importance in the world. We have what we call the big five and COPD is one of those, or is the main one. Um, it, there are more than 65 million people who suffer from significant COPD and many more with uh, modest COPD. It is the third leading cause of death in the world and it is the only leading cause of death where the numbers are increasing. Three million people die from it each year. Next. Next slide. Asthma. Uh, asthma is the most chronic, common chronic disease of childhood. 14% of the children globally have asthma and its prevalence in children is rising. Uh, more than 334 million people suffer from it. Pneumonia is another one of the top causes of death and it's been the top causes for death for decades. It's difficult to get an exact number on the deaths from pneumonia, but it is certainly more than 4 million an annually. It is the leading cause of death in children under five, um, and it is a leading cause of death in the elderly. Tuberculosis, and I think uh, you're well, well aware that tuberculosis is the most fatal infectious disease uh, globally. 10.4 million cases were uh, uh, present in 2015, according to the World Health Organization, and tuberculosis 1.4 million deaths. Next slide, please. Lung cancer is the most lethal neoplasm in the world. It kills 1.6 million people, and in many countries, it is more fatal than the next four, and in some countries, five cancers combined. And the sad thing is that the number of lung cancer cases and fatalities is growing. Next slide. Sleep apnea. So that rounds up what we call the big five uh, lung diseases, but there are many more. For example, sleep apnea affects more than 100 million people. And in many settings, again, this is an area that is unknown the exact amount, but in many settings where it is, is uh, tallied, 5 to 10 percent of adults may have sleep apnea, which can cause a variety of uh, illnesses, including accidents um, and uh, increased cardiovascular uh, and other diseases. Next slide. Occupational lung disease is another really important thing. More than 50 million people have occupational lung disease. These are due to either mineral dusts, as in mining or uh, in a variety of other industries, organic dusts, um, such as uh, millers and bakers, um, bioaerosols, which includes um, uh, molds and a variety of other uh, uh, biologically active uh, agents and fumes of a variety of a site, a variety of types. Each of these lead, lead to occupational lung disease, which can be acute or chronic, and are preventable. 
Next slide, please. Pulmonary hypertension is another common illness that occurs in 1% of the world's population. And if you look at persons over the age of 65, about 10% uh, have pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary embolism, or blood clots to the lung, uh, are again, are a common uh, disease. And in, in it is estimated that it is between 6 and 20 per 100,000. But I believe this is grossly estimated because mild uh, pulmonary embolism often go unnoticed and advanced uh, in persons with uh, serious or advanced disease, they, uh, may be, they, it, they may have died from pulmonary embolism, but their, their death may be attributed to heart disease, cancer, or the underlying, other underlying condition that's more easy to diagnose. Pollution and climate change, these are two really important uh, world health problems that are in which the lungs are really on the front line. Polluted air must enter through the lungs and global warming increases air pollution. Also warming changes the habitats uh, of vectors of disease and of humans and um, these changing habitats increase um, uh, infectious patterns. So uh, new, uh, the, uh, for example, uh, mosquitoes are finding uh, new areas where, uh, where there's more uh, increased temperature or increased humidity. Sometimes uh, a variety of other vectors also um, are causing new problems in different areas. Next slide. The, uh, and emergency preparedness is another um, major uh, concern or major activity of, of nations. Uh, what do we do if, uh, what, if there's a, a new uh, global emergency? Some of these emergencies have been viral pandemics. These affect the lungs. Um, the other concerns are chemical or biologic warfare of terrorism. Most of these um, will be uh, the lungs will be involved with this, either as the, uh, the main target or because of uh, the breathing in these um, agents. Um, and then just without, just normally, the, uh, the exposure we have, there are two, mil two billion, billion, B-I-L-L-I-O-N, people exposed to indoor air smoke. It's huge, a huge problem. One billion are exposed to air pollution, and one billion are exposed to tobacco smoke. Each of these takes a heavy toll on life and um, ability uh, and, cause, uh, and cause disability. In all, more than four million people die prematurely from chronic, uh, chronic respiratory disease annually. So, as you can see from this, the respiratory disease or lung disease is extremely important and we cannot um, uh, advance the sustainable uh, developmental goals without uh, addressing these respiratory problems. So the first has the following recommendations, which are listed in this uh, publication called, in the right-hand corner called the Global Impact of uh, Respiratory Disease, which is available on the FERS website. These are taken from the uh, from the global risk impact uh, uh, document. However, I'm just going to call your attention to one or two words on each one of these recommendations. So the first recommendation is increasing uh, the public awareness. And that's what World Lung Day is all about. And that's what uh, Citizens Network News and our colleagues in the uh, media are helping with. This is an extremely important first step. The uh, second recommendation is we must reduce all tobacco products. Uh, and this must be uh, a universal support of the Framework Convention for Tobacco Control. This will be an enormous uh, uh, factor in reducing lung disease. Number three, next slide, air quality. Uh, the World Health Organization has developed air quality standards. We, um, we must get our countries, all countries on board uh, to um, 
you to accept these standards and to reduce air air pollution, um, both indoor, occupational, and outdoor. We strongly believe that everyone has the right to breathe clean air. Promote the fourth recommendation is promote universal access to quality health care. Again, uh, strengthening health care systems is really important. Uh, improve early diagnosis is our first, fifth recommendation. And this is because so often individuals come to, um, to medical attention late. Tuberculosis is a common example of this. Uh, individuals may not be aware of it, come um, to uh, seek medical attention late. By that time, the disease has spread to others. And sometimes it is too late for uh, medical care to intervene. The solution, or one of the solutions to this, is improving awareness of the individuals or the populace. Uh, we must increase our education and training of health professions. Um, we have to have a, uh, an adequate workforce that can address these needs for, for lung health. Uh, and this has to go all the way through society. Um, Recommendation seven is to standardize uh, how we monitor and treat lung disease. Now, most of the lung diseases are coming out with uh, national or with international guidelines to start with. The international guidelines are adopted uh, or adapted, adopted and adapted by national organizations because the international doesn't always fit every country. However, Getting a standard approach to the treatment of lung disease is critically important, as um, as is demonstrated by uh, the tuberculosis. Now that there's an international standard for tuberculosis, uh, most countries have adopted to that, and the treatment is much more successful. So this, the last one, is to increase respiratory research. We have many of the sustainable goals are only possible with uh, development of new programs, new tools, and strategies to prevent or apply some of the, the new research findings. And this again is a, a task for government and non-government research organizations. So how can this be done? One of the first uh, things that we, uh, one of our first goals for uh, World Lung Day is to increase in uh, enlist a broad support of individuals throughout the world. Uh, and again, uh, you are helping with this, or you can help with this. We want to invigorate organiz organizations that are uh, deal with lung health and then increasing awareness. So this is uh, the essence of the main message for World Lung Day. So in the world, uh, as far as World Lung Day goes, Part of this is a, there's a charter for lung health. And this charter, uh, and I, on the next slide I'll tell you how to sign up to it, calls for clean air, healthy lungs, raised awareness, improved healthcare access, eliminations of preventable disease, research and education. We're asking all of you to sign the charter and to get as many people as you can to do this. We, our goal is to get 100,000 individuals to sign on, and this is the sign on uh, um, URL, uh, uh, www.fersnet.org. And we're asking all health organizations uh, to sign, uh, the, also to sign our, to sign on, to assent to the charter. And to do this, if they send your logo and contact information to me, uh, and there's my uh, uh, email address, deanshroffnagel at firstnet.org. We are putting the logos of the organizations on the website that are supporting uh, and committed to a charter for lung health. So this in summary, alleviating the burden of lung disease must be a main strategy for the SDGs and a requirement for all nations. These goals are achievable, and the ability to control, prevent, cure respiratory disease is cost-effective. So that concludes my part, and I thank you.
for um, for uh, attention to this, and I would like to now uh, ask Paula um, to say a few words about one of the FERS organizations, the uh, the union. I think most of you uh, probably know the union, and it is probably the most uh, uh, well-known and uh, globally far-reaching organization of FERS. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dean Schroffnagel. Now is the perfect stage to invite our next panelist, Dr. Paula Fujiwara, Scientific Director of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union, as it is more commonly known as. As we all know, Paula has led tuberculosis and HIV research at the Union and also played a key role at Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and is credited with successfully fighting MDR-TB during the New York TB outbreak in the 1990s as well. Welcome Dr. Paula Fujiwara, over to you now. Paula is having uh, audio difficulties and mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, we'll try to connect, but in the meantime, maybe I can go through her slides and say a few words. Yeah, yes, please do. Yes, please. So the union, uh, these are, I, I think, next slide. The, the main, some of the uh, uh, motto of the union is no share and act. This uh, second slide here shows the far-reaching uh, areas of the union. The union is involved in technical assistance, education, training, and research in more than 70 countries. Um, and its main involvement is tuberculosis, HIV, lung health, non-communicable diseases, and tobacco control and policy. So the union's motto, or the union uh, uh, is way they work is no, that means research and evidence, finding that, share, disseminating the knowledge, and then act, delivering services. All of these are major activities of the unions, and their goal is to change policy and practice to promote lung health. Actually, other health areas too, but the uh, main focus is lung health. These are under no, these are research, uh, uh, areas. The uh, union has been involved in major uh, clinical trials to develop new drugs for multi-drug resistant TB. Uh, these are very exciting. Uh, our first uh, trial has reduced the, um, the, the time course of treatment of multi-drug resistance to, almost, to nine months. Uh, with a regimen for, for many of those individuals. It's been adopted by the World Health Organization. And they have several other trials ongoing to test new drugs and new combinations of drugs. Very exciting area. This is, uh, this is short course, our structured operational researches. Um, this is, uh, discusses some of the activities. The, uh, the union is involved with teaching practical skills for, for opera, operational research in many countries. And this approach really develops, it, is, it combines training and implementation. So getting a, uh, a, a product or a, uh, an activity, it's being developed in a uh, lower middle income country, and it is being developed and by the individuals of that country and while it's being developed these individuals are being trained and uh, to be able to sustain this. These are some of the uh, research projects. Wow, I didn't actually, I, I'm, I've been on the union, I've been in the union for many years, union board, but look at the number of research projects undertaken in uh, uh, 453, that is amazing. Uh, but oh, these are uh, different uh, projects and subjects. Uh, the, one of the main ones is uh, tuberculosis, uh, but others, as, as you can see from this slide, are also involved. This is uh, one of the courses. Uh, you can see that the union is 
a dynamo in uh, scientific work, uh, the number of courses they've had, the number of participants finishing the courses, 92% uh, is very impressive, and the number of papers uh, submitted uh, by their trainees to peer-reviewed journals is, uh, is a m uh, metric of how uh, effective these courses have been. This is uh, this, it further uh, talks about the STREAM trial. This is a, a really important or uh, therapy uh, trial for anti-tuberculous treatment in patients with multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Um, these are, as I mentioned earlier, this study regimen is a nine-month course. Um, previously, uh, patients would take these drugs for two years, uh, often because they had many side effects. The uh, dropout rate was uh, very high, so going for a shorter period of time is extremely important. Uh, this is a the second column uh, uh, is uh, discusses a, a, another uh, aspect of this trial. Chair, and this is the program of uh, of sharing this information. The International Management and Development Program uh, is, is involved, as, as you saw from those earlier uh, images, uh, on the global uh, map in developing budgets that meet global, uh, governmental and uh, donor requirements, organizing uh, healthcare staff, organizing the management so that the countries can apply for uh, uh, research can apply for um, can can uh, coordinate the uh, medical management uh, communication plans, um, etc. Uh, and that on the share that was only uh, part of what they do. In fact, all of this uh, presentation here of Paulus is only part of what the uh, union does. Uh, Act is now the direct on the ground activities uh, and two of these that are listed here are active case finding and decreasing tobacco use. Case finding really means that uh, in the past a lot of tuberculosis went unreported and undetected primarily because uh, the case finding was not was suboptimal and what the union has been doing is to increase um, the case finding, again, through uh, access to, to good quality TB diagnosis, treatment, awareness, um, and it has been targeting private health facilities and urban poor, traditionally which have been outside of the uh, national tuberculosis programs. This is the SPARC trial that's on the previous uh, SPARC project. Uh, is involves partnerships with the Ministry of Health. Uh, this is in Uganda um, and in uh, many uh, different health facilities. It has identified over 20,000 uh, persons with TB symptoms and it is getting these people to di be diagnosed and treated earlier. Uh, the success rate is very remarkable. Uh, this program in Uganda is being expanded through the new, new Global Fund proposal uh, to other countries. Now, the union has taken a major role in reducing tobacco use over the last uh, decade. It supports uh, governments, civil societies. Uh, it is focused in low and middle income countries, which often have the highest prevalence and the highest burden of tobacco use. The tobacco companies have been uh, restricted in many of the developed countries and have turned their attention to uh, low and middle income countries where increasing use of tobacco has been astounding. The union has, uh, through the information on this slide, been uh, has reached over 130 government departments. It has uh, has administered 300 grants across 43 countries uh, and is building technical capacity to reduce tobacco use. Now, and this is again some of the impact of this global tobacco uh, initiative. Uh, 
protecting 2.85 billion people from the harms of secondhand smoke, introducing, introducing national smoke-free laws in 28 countries, graphic warnings on tobacco packaging. Um, and many of these countries have established sustainable tobacco control funding uh, after uh, the union's initiative. This is a discussion that the World, Health Con World Conference on Lung Health will be held in Guadalajara in October, and uh, there should be a, a great deal of new information on tuberculosis and uh, uh, new technologies, new uh, molecular tools and so forth. Uh, uh, they will uh, uh, have special uh, press conferences, and um, there will be uh, material for, uh, plenty of material for the media. And that's the, uh, the last of this. Thank you. And I'm sorry uh, Paula couldn't get into this, but uh, I hope I, I didn't do too badly on, on uh, telling about her stuff. Thank you. Double thanks to you, uh, Dean, uh, for the taking over, and uh, at least the slides were there. And and really grateful to you for pitching in. Uh, this brings us to the end of the experts' presentations. And now we begin uh, the open session. Uh, participants, please keep sending your questions using the chat function or raise your virtual hand on the webinar screen. Uh, we begin the question and answer session now. We already have a lot many questions with us. Uh, and uh, Dr. Dean is there uh, to answer. We have. Uh, with us, Dr. P. S. Sarma, key organizer and lung expert of the 2017 National Conference of TB Association of India. And Dr. Sarma would like to say something. Dr. Sarma, over to you. Dr. P. S. Sarma is, I think, having some technical problems, so he has uh, uh, sent his uh, comment, and he's saying that greetings from NatCon 2017. He is the key organizing committee member of the 2017 National Conference of TB and Chest Diseases, or NATCON as it is known as. And he says we will popularize World Lung Day to all our doctors through NATCON and the Indian Medical Association. Uh, that's wonderful. And what I would ask uh, Dr. Salma is maybe if he would send the the uh, logo for some of those information, we can uh, post that on our internet and we can also through media uh, post uh, or promote uh, NatCon and yes, uh, uh, think... some of their activities. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dean. Dr. Manoj Toshniwal also would like to say something. Dr. Toshniwal, if you are uh, ready with your comment or question, you may please speak now. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dean. Great presentation and uh, really congratulations for initi initiating this uh, to care for lungs of the world. Uh, I'm working in the area of TB since last 15 years. Big workforce is working for TB control in India as well as globally but has rarely seen a concise document covering all the lung diseases or diseases affecting the lungs uh, in the training or education material of TB. Little bit of tobacco smoking is definitely coming up, but uh, lots, lots is missing. So I think uh, to approach SDGs and rightly pointed out by you also that an integrated approach where all the areas of lung diseases are included and if we can include it in education, training material, and awareness program for huge workforce that is already systematically working for the one, one disease of the lung that is TB, then this can be one of the big approach we can have uh, uh, to spread effectively and efficiently uh, all, all these things to the healthcare systems and the population in general. Okay, uh, I, I think, uh, thank you for that comment. I, I think that is very appropriate. Um, the, the documentation uh, is, uh, is really important. First of all, there is a lot of documentation, but as you say, an integrated approach and something that would apply to a specific population, a specific country, 
is often is really not always present or not present. Um, that's an enormous task to get these because um, you need to also adapt it to the individual country uh, where, for example, you may want to emphasize in, in India TB, you may not want to emphasize, um, say, sleep apnea or something so much. Uh, or you may have a bigger problem with diabetes and so forth. Um, so this is certainly a, uh, an important area, important aspect. Um, I will take this back to our FERS members, and they do produce these documents. The union in particular has many documents, but I think that what you're saying about an integrated approach is, uh, is true, is not present. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dean. Uh, we have a question from Zafar Kidwai, a journalist from Bangladesh. Uh, Zafar wants to know that World Lung Day is important as so many specific lung disease days were there already. Are TB, asthma, pneumonia, COPD, tobacco use, etc. are different disciplines joining hands on lung day? Yes. So we, uh, this discussion came up. So World Lung Day was first proclaimed at the World Health Assembly in uh, Geneva in uh, May of this year. And we would like to have World Lung Day every year on September 25th. Uh, the lungs were in this, as I started out, and as you started out, being not so recognized, it's the only day that, only one of those major diseases that did not have a day. Um, one of the concerns we had was, could this, would this take away from some of the other specific diseases, for example, World Tuberculosis Day? Uh, we felt, and the organizers of these other days felt not so, that um, that World Lung Day would be a unifying factor where each of these um, days would, or the organizers of these days would promote World Lung Day, and then in turn, we, uh, we would report these individual days. Our goal is to be inclusive with as many people, getting as many people involved as possible, and in ways that help their uh, days and not in any way detract from it. Thank you, though. Paula, would you like to add something to that? Uh, first of all, I, I want to, I don't know if you can hear me now, but I want to apologize profusely for the technical difficulties that um, I've, I've had. I, yes, so I mean, I just want to add on to what uh, Dean has just said about the fact that uh, the, the question about, you know, are there are too many uh, specific disease days, but the whole idea of FERS, this, this forum of international respiratory societies, is really to come and, and put together the idea that, you know, we're all in this together. And that even though there are many, many diseases, the fact that the lung, the lung itself, you know, is, is, what, is what binds this all, uh, all together. And, and uh, as he said, this is the only or major organ of the body that doesn't have its own uh, day and, and a way of putting putting the information across. So uh, all these other days with the lung lead to this one big overarching umbrella day, uh, cele celebrating or, uh, or putting emphasis on the lung. Thank you, uh, Paula. Thank you, Paula. As you said, we are all in it together. And Dean was there who presented all your slides, so we we could. Do <laughs> through your presentation because we are in it together. Yes, thank, I, you, thank you so much. And if I may I just, add, I don't know if I mean, he mentioned, uh, I'd like to, uh, can I just say something about Guadalajara? It was the last, it was the last slide, yeah. but really it's, it's just going to be a, a great moment. First of all, um, it's, it's ironic or, or coincidental that uh, this was mentioned in, in Cancun, and now we're going to be back in Mexico uh, in another city, but uh, also, again, emphasizing this whole issue of, of the, um, the lung. And so I really encourage you, uh, all of, any of you who can come to Guadalajara, to because there's going to be um, <clears throat> a lot on not only just uh, zoonotic tuberculosis, but uh, but also a lot of stuff on new TB science and technologies, and the late breaker sessions on TB, TB, HIV, and diabetes, and also this time students' work will be featured. So it's going to be very, very um, a very uh, dynamic conference, and and our emphasis is on Latin America this time. Thank you. 
I would like to add to that uh, Paula mentioned uh, used the word celebrating and I think several uh, individuals or several organizations and, and FERS included are taking the tack that World Lung Day is a day to celebrate uh, breathing. No one thinks of, of breathing yet if we don't breathe, if, uh, if you can't breathe nothing else matters is a uh, expression that holds very true. So this can be a day of celebrating, uh, celebrating our lungs and celebrating breathing in addition to calling attention to the uh, burden of lung disease. Very rightly said, Dean. Very true. Uh, Dr. Rachana Trivedi wants to ask a question. Uh, Dr. Rachana, you may ask your question. But yeah, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, for uh, as we have seen for most of the respiratory disease, there is no standard protocol for management except for TB, which we have seen it. What can be the best way which can be suggested so that we can develop and can implement for other diseases also? Uh, well, there are some standards. There are other um, uh, standards for different diseases. Um, and in fact, many of them are uh, products of FERS organizations. The Gold and GINA present world standards for COPD and um, asthma. Uh, the, it's important that these, that first of all, I, I believe that first world standards need to be developed. And TB is a great example. And then the second is a national program has to look at these, CO, that these international standards and see how they apply to their country or their setting. And uh, if they apply, then I think it's, it behooves the, the countries then to apply those standards. So one of our uh, important thrusts is to have, um, for example, a standard management of asthma uh, nationwide and and uh, in each country so there are standards for actually most of there are many of those diseases that I mentioned some of them do not apply to all countries I think the um, but but many of them do and I think uh, these if if you can get a standard approach you uh, benefit the individuals tremendously asthma is a good example uh, the use of an inhaled uh, corticosteroid uh, as a maintenance medication. Uh, the union has been very uh, instrumental or very uh, tried to get this as a standard throughout the world. Our FERS, other FERS organizations have done the same. GINA is also trying to do that. Uh, they, that's, those are only examples and there are uh, standards for other for the uh, management of these other uh, diseases as well. But you're right, they're not, uh, not necessarily adapted in every country. In fact, most of them are not. And even if they are adapted nationally, then you have to get the practitioners, the healthcare workers to uh, uh, abide by these standards. Uh, it's, the standard for tuberculosis is remarkable in that its reach has been so universal so much more than in the other uh, diseases. Thank, thank you, Dean. Uh, I would request the participants to please keep sending your questions using the chat function or raise your virtual hand, which you see on the webinar screen. Uh, we have a, a question from uh, health correspondent Sonia, uh, Sophia, who wants to know that World Heart Day is so close to World Lung Day. So she wants to ask both the panelists, can you suggest interlinkages so that we can do stories connecting the two. Oh, uh, that's a great idea. This is, uh, uh, we were aware, so in selecting uh, September 25th, uh, a number of things went into that, uh, both positive and negative. We wanted to uh, have a date that was not conflicting with other days uh, that have no uh, national or uh, historical crisis and so forth and uh, was a little bit distant from the other as mentioned the World TV Day and some of the other days. The only uh, close conflict was World Heart Day and uh, after some discussion and with a variety of people and organizations 
we came that we thought that being so close would not uh, deter from either heart or lung. However, we hadn't thought of a story, or I hadn't thought of a story, I don't think anyone is, of linking the two together. Uh, I think that would be an interesting uh, news piece, especially uh, one could do something about the burden and the progress in both heart and lung, uh, comparing the two. That's a, a good idea since they're close together. Uh, and no one's ever thought of that that I know of that, that has expressed it anyway. Can I say something about the, the concept of the days? You know, as we know, there are only 365 days in a year. And as Dean points out, we're trying to find a way to, uh, you know, uh, spread the spread the days apart. However, I think that we have to remember that days, you know, these days are only a, um, it's a showcase, but it's really it's really a medium to push the uh, the advocacy forward. So it doesn't end on you know work doesn't end on that day. It highlights, but it really means that the work has to continue on for the rest of the year. Or the rest of you know of, of years or decades or whatever to know in order to um, to advance the cause. So um, I think the idea that was just expressed about linking linking the two is very important, especially in this era of, of the sustainable development goals. We want to really make sure that we we are uh, comprehensive and not just vertical. But uh, just to emphasize that days uh, it's it's not the end all be all. It's really a, a path to uh, to further the message. Uh, Ashok Ramsaru, a former and very senior radio program producer of South African Broadcasting Corporation or SABC, uh, is, is asking from Durban. Uh, he says, I'm surprised to see the huge burden of COPD and also more shocked to learn that the burden of COPD is rising. Uh, he wants both the panelists to please elaborate more on what can be done to focus more on lung diseases that need more attention. Right. I think uh, this is where we really appreciate the media, the press, because you have done such a great job in increasing awareness. And that is, uh, COPD is, a, is an illness that often goes under the radar, if you would, uh, or is blamed on smoking alone and uh, is uh, blamed on the, the, the persons who have the disease rather than, uh, than trying to address the changes. It is true that uh, COPD is a consequence of smoking and eliminating or going after tobacco will be a huge uh, factor in reducing uh, COPD. However, COPD is also caused by indoor uh, air, uh, air pollution or by, uh, by occupational uh, exposure, uh, by outdoor air pollution. And One journalist wants to ask about uh, what about hospital acquired infections? And in many cases, uh, even particularly in pneumonia, there have been cases where it said it was hospital acquired pneumonia. So what role does infection control play in making us breathe clean air? Well, I think the, the issue of um, hospital um, acquired infections is, is, is extremely important and the infection, the infection control that, that, um, that is allied with this is key. For example, uh, as you know, earlier this year, the World Health Organization put out a, a, a pathogens list of which TB was not on. However, um, I am uh, pleased, pleased to say that with the uh, new organization of, of, of the WHO, the new director general, this has now come to the fore. And um, I think that we need to link, because uh, tuberculosis along with other hospitals is, is, is also a hospital, can be a hospital acquired infection with the, with the uh, outbreaks that have occurred, certainly in things that I've been involved with in, in during my, my career. So, we need to, it, it is important to use what we have in terms of infectious diseases to link, to, to highlight the issue that it's not just one disease that's a, uh, a problem in the hospital, but many. So infection control overall uh, in a hospital is a key to, prevent, to, to prevention of uh, infections in general, not just for uh, specific, specific diseases. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we now come to the end of this webinar. My heartfelt gratitude to all the panelists and participants for taking part in today's webinar and enriching it with their valuable inputs. Special thanks to the union for helping us host this webinar. The webinar recording will be made available to all of you as always. Also, please mark in your calendar and join us on next Tuesday, that is on 26 September, at the same time for a very important webinar where experts will share the scientific highlights of the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health, which is being held next month in Guadalajara in Mexico, as Paula has said earlier also. So till we meet again at the same time next Tuesday, bye and have a good day. And please do not forget the importance of healthy lungs that help us breathe air and sustain life.